Wednesday, July 4th, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Happy Independence Day, everyone. Happy 4th of July. A young planet that was discovered by the European Southern Observatory. This is a new technique, much improved than when I was a planet hunter years ago. In fact, I'm still a member of the original planet hunters community uh, from back in 2008. I haven't actively hunted planets for quite some time. Um, the way we did it back then, we just looked for uh, variances in the light signature from a star. What you're looking at here, this is actually the planet. But what we would look at is Kepler data, and Kepler would send back data of a section of the Milky Way galaxy just loaded with stars. You would pick out a star. If you saw the star dim more than once, then you had uh, a possible candidate for a planet. But the story here from CNN.com goes as follows. A planet hunting instrument has captured the first confirmed image of a newborn planet that's still forming in our galaxy. For perspective purposes, this is about 500 light years away. The Milky Way galaxy is 100,000 light years across. So by comparison, this is really, really close. 500 light years compared to the 100,000 light year across galaxy, that's fairly close. To the right of the black circle, and the black circle looks like the corona graph that we see on SOHO. To the right of the black circle at the center of the image, the round bright planet can be seen within the disk of gas and dust around the young dwarf star, PDS-70. They've also found here at the ESO yet another planetary nursery they're calling this. This was released on July 2nd, just a couple of days ago. This is in the constellation of Taurus. Again, about 500 light years away, which is, relatively speaking, pretty close. So they're thinking planets, this is the star, they're thinking planets could be in this ring of gas and dust here and here. So they've come a long way in a short amount of time, like 10 years ago, we did not have, or at least at least available to us, this type of capability. It was uh, kind of prehistoric, really, if you look, look back and think about how we used to do it. We used to wait for shadows, just not necessarily even a shadow, a dimness. Now, if you saw a shadow, then more than likely you had a dense or a quite large planet. But most of the time, it was just a dimness in the star. So, and again, too, a lot of things were had to be taken into consideration, you know, the size of the star, if the star was real big, if you were maybe tracking a real small planet like Mercury or something big like Jupiter. This planet here that you're looking at is supposedly around the size of Jupiter, maybe a little bigger. So, interesting story. You can find the links below in the description box. I've also got some interesting pictures that I wanted to share with you guys that were sent in last week, actually. Here's this big edge up in the sky again. This was sent in from uh, Quebec, Canada, uh, back in June, actually the last week of June, by Rock L from Quebec. And there's that very distinct, that very sharp edge in the sky along the cloud. And, you know, you even I've even heard meteorologists talk about this, or you can ask one. They don't really know for sure how or why this forms. And to be honest with you, as somebody that's watched the sky for many, many years, I've never really seen anything like that either. It's something that's kind of new. And we've been seeing it kind of frequently lately. You saw that one picture. If we could see this whole thing, it might look like part of a big square in the sky, like we saw a couple of months ago. I'm not exactly sure where that was located. I want to say somewhere out on the East Coast. But this is a, a very sharp, distinct line in the sky that, like I said, nobody really knows for sure how those form. This is the Strawberry Moon sent in by GNN Galactic News Network. I want to thank you for sharing that moon from the last week of June in 2018. Also, another look at the moon sent in by Courtney from Calabasas. And you can see the view of the moon was quite spectacular back on the 28th. There it is from California. This one here, I'm not exactly sure of the location, but that's a really good picture. 
of the moon. That's called the strawberry moon. And the moon was in the Earth's shadow for like two, two and a half hours. And that's what creates this effect. So I want to thank Courtney from Calabasas. I want to thank the Galactic News Network. I want to thank Rock from Quebec for sharing this fantastic sky observation. This is becoming more and more common and don't know what causes it. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a happy 4th of July and be safe out there.